The older woman shuffled up the stairs. She halted outside the wooden door, raising her hand and knocking it slightly. She shuffled when there was no response. Han, it's time to get up. She could. There was a groan this time. She shoveled up, opened the door, rolling her eyes as the lump under the blanket that was her daughter. She headed for the window and lashing it and throwing it open. Immediately, the room was filled with light, a light breeze shifting through and the usual noise of the early morning. You finally sat up. Oh, good morning, mother, you mumbled. The other lady nodded. Now, moving toward the wooden drawer and picking out some clothing. How did you sleep? She sent a knowing glance at her daughter. Mm, rather pleasantly. I think that's the nicest sleep I get in a while. You trailed it off, and your mother caught you staring at the ring on your hand. You should be glad you didn't sleep on the floor. That handsome warrior boyfriend of yours carry you up there. Say he couldn't leave a lady like you sleep on the floor. But he had to leave or his friend would get mad. You squinted at her. And some warrior boyfriend? I don't... You trailed off for a moment before your eyes went wide. Mother! You buried your face in your hands, muffling an embarrassing groan. Your mother simply laughed, placing the dress onto the bed. <laughs> Come on, breakfast is ready. With that, she left the room. You waited all day, gaze fleeting down the street as you traced to the ring engraving with your finger. It was an union jewel for him not to come every day. He and Bakugo had other things to do, but it felt as if time went slower when he wasn't around, as if the day itself drawled on no motivation to carry on without a smile to grace your time. Your, your parents let you do the... Your parents let you do their delivery that day. And that took your mind off him a little bit, until your eyes would catch sight of the ring, the glittering ruby, the same color of his eyes. You missed him. You didn't want to admit it, that just after such a short period of time, you'd fallen ahead of his for him. He trusted you, protected you, he was kind and never failed to make you smile. And all you could do was hope that perhaps he needed you as much as you needed him. He didn't return the next day either. It was a dark, dairy day. Grey clouds settling themselves in the sky. The rain was light but constant. If you stood at in for too long, you'd find yourself uncomfortably cold and dumped. The kind of cold that, sh that sent shiver up your spine. However, for you, it was just another day of staring out into the town, watching as people bustled and hustled up down the street, minding their own businesses. After all, everyone had their own life to live. The next day seemed no better. The clouds hadn't cleared, and a dreary mood had settled over the town. What once were joyous greetings seemed to become nothing but a core. You had resigned yourself to humming to pass the time, trusting the wood again with your finger. You tried to keep your usual cherry posture, but you would more often than not find yourself sadly sighing. You just wished to see him again. His smile would be enough to drive away the clouds. You jumped as the bakery door slammed open. Your gaze snapped to the offender. Your gasp catching in your throat as your eyes caught crimson. Kirishima stood in the doorway, hunched over, inches heavy, scratches and cut, leathering his body, and a particularly bad gash on his shoulder dripped blow down his arms. He finally glanced up at you, smiling. Hey. That snapped you out of your trance, and you rushed to his side. Are you okay? What happened? You gently tried the cut, minding, spinning as you tried to recall where your medical kids were. He hoped in his mouth to respond, but you cut him off. It doesn't matter for now. Come here. You carefully tugged on his arm, leading him to the back room, where you sit him on a stool and begin flittering around the room. You dump a cloth and clean the dirt and grim, riding it about, holding it before to his bleeding wound. Kirishima watched you now, a sense of warmth spreading through his chest as he watched your broke races in worry. It's okay, you know, I've been through worse. 
You rolled your eyes. And that's exactly the reason why you have all these cars, dummy. You applied more pressure to the gash. <sighs> so what did you do this time? You asked. Kirishima adverted his gaze, pouting. Uh, about that, I, um... He trailed off. You? Hard on your gaze. What? What happened? The redhead let out a nervous chuckle. Um, well, <laughs> Bakugo and I were attacked. Some old enemy caught up. We've already spent too long here. Bakugo want to keep moving. But I had to see you. We're leaving tomorrow. You didn't even seem to flinch, beside the slight tense of your muscle. Your eyebrows were still crisp, but your mouth was set in a thin line. It was near silent. Oh, was the only word you could manage. The rain continued to pour outside, and you felt a new connection with the dreary weather. You continued to worry lest it to his wound. The two of you avoiding each other's gaze. I... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get so... Attached, I just... The boy trailed off, feeling with his finger in his laps. He cast your gaze towards your face, heart clenching, as he saw the pain wash through your eyes. Oh no, it's... um, It's, it's okay, I'm glad that you gotta stay here as long as you have. I mean, I never would have to go hear your story or have been protected by a fierce crimson dragon. You smiled a little. Or even... Got to hold a sword. I wouldn't give up the past few weeks for for the world. You hated how your voice crackled. You hated how this one heaven affected you so much. How your heart seemed so constrict itself on the simple idea of possibly never seeing again. I promise I come and visit as much as I can. I don't want to put you in any danger though. He gently took your hand into his arm, relishing in the warmth they provide. So, this is goodbye then? You try to smile. Try to keep your voice from whatever Kirishima nodded. Not forever. I'll see you again. I have to. He trade off, rubbing his thumb across the back of your head. Mm, please take care of yourself, Kirishima. He got to his feet, trailing back toward the entrance and still into one with your fingers. You guys pause at the front door, neither wanting to moment to end. I wish you safe travels. I'll be waiting for your visits. He spoke softly. Kirishima gives you a sad smile. Mm, of course, my lady. He performed a mock bow, earning a light laugh from you. Kirishima finally turned toward the door. Heaving a sigh, he stepped out into the street, pulling your hands away from yours leaving behind the warmth, security, and love. You watched him wave down the street, catching every single glance he threw over his shoulder. You could wait. You had to. That night, both your parents could tell you were distraught. They were able to part out you eventually, but both immediately felt guilty, trailing worry glances. You retired early to your room that night. You lay awake, staring at the ceiling, as you tried to think of anything but him. You hadn't even been a day, and you already didn't know you were going to get by. Your life before Kirishima had been repetitive and dull. You didn't want it to return to that, but you didn't seem to have a choice. The next morning, you were already feeling as if the world were trying to push you down. It was a relatively nice day. Your usual customer came in. All as it had before Kirishima, and you hated it. Lost in your thought? You hadn't even realized you had balled your fist. Sweetheart. Sweetheart! You snapped your gaze toward your mother's voice, instantly falling sheepies as your mother becomes you over. She gently pats your shoulder, glancing around seemingly in search of something. Your father didn't exactly agree to this. She paused as she quickly hurried to grab a, a parcel from one of the benches, but I'd never be able to live with myself watching you so miserable. She offered the package. It was fairly large, wrapped in borrowed paper and tied neatly with some string. You hesitantly took the package, eyebrow raised, as you looked quizzically at your mother. 
What is it? What are you talking about? You asked. Your mother huffed. Ah, go pack your things and go. Go to him. Your mother's expression softened. What? Are you. Are you letting me go on an adventure? You couldn't stop the smile that had graced your lips. Your mother nodded. You've always belonged out there. But now, you have someone I can trust to protect you. Your father is going to throw a fit. She chuckled to herself. You swooped in, planting a kiss to your mother's cheeks before dashing upstairs, throwing an I love you over your shoulder. You stood ready by the door. You had proper boots and a warm cloak, as well as a blouse and some pants, all better suited for the life of an adventure. You had a rush bag of your belonging, mostly just some spare clothing, food, and some bedding. You glanced out toward the street. Your dream was mere second away from you, from coming true. The street you've been seeing every day will be lost behind you, finally free to explore and truly live. As long as you could find Kirishima in Bakugo, of course. Your mother shuffled over, pulling you into a bone-crushing hug. You better come and visit, and soon, or your father won't ever let you go again. Her voice was stern, but her eyes were filled with warmth. She pulled away, knitting the door cloak, the only way a mother could. Ah, you've grown to be a fine young lady, hmm? Now? You better hurry, you need to catch that boy. With a final goodbye, a last smile and a prolonged speech about avoiding goblins, you were finally out in the world on your own. You made a beeline for the forest, backtracking as best as you could to what you hoped was still their camp. You didn't want to think about the idea of them having already left. You trapped again the brush, your heart treading against your chest as the urgency was in your stomach. Hopefully, Bakugo wouldn't attack you again. Thought you'd rather take that than being left behind. The surrounding forest became more familiar. You were so close. You forged your head. You burst into the clearing gaze sweeping over the area in one hurried swoop. The fire was still lit. Your eyes settled on the cave. The bugs were still there. They hadn't left yet. You let out a breath, slumping your shoulder. What the fuck are you doing here? You turn your gaze toward the brush voice, finding yourself being greeted by the tip of an arrow. Oh, Bakugo! I'm sorry to barge in like this, but... You shrunk, but at Bakugo took a step forward her, refusing to lower the bow. He was a few feet away, adorned in his usual attire. You could see a few fresh scratches littered his shoulders and arms. I said, what the fuck are you doing here? He spat. You ward your eyes. I'm coming with you. She, you stated. Bakugo stared at you incredulously. Fucking excuse me. He sounded a little more dumbfounded that attracted. I'm going with you and Kirishima on your adventure. You crossed your arms. You knew you had to stand your ground against Bakugo if there was any chance of you tagging along. The blonde scrolled. Give me a good reason I shouldn't send this horror right through your face. I can cook, I can clean, I can tame once, train me up, and I'll be a pack horse if you want. Hmm? I'm coming with you. There was a silence for a moment. Bakugo seemed to relax his pull on the arrow. Bakugo seemed to relax his pull on the arrow just the slightest bit. Until his gaze dropped to your crusted arm. He squinted his eyes, glaring at something. Then he scoffed. Immediately relaxing in, he pulled and letting his arm to drop to both sides. Ah, so shitty hair has decided, has he? Guess there's no point arguing with that. Don't need hair for brains to go and turn into a dragon again. He huffled, glaring dagger at you. Fine, you're coming alone. Now either pull your word around here or I'll leave you to wolves. Got it? He didn't wait for a response, simply stalking off toward the cave grumbling the whole way there. You followed him hesitantly behind him, unsure of what exactly had just happened. Uh, um, where is Kirishima, if you don't mind me asking? He said you guys were leaving today. 
is doing some last minute hunting and making sure our tracks are covered. He suddenly spun on his heel, pointing a cursory finger at you. Who knows you're leaving? You raise your hand and surrender. Only my mother and father. The town of the father and eventually, but they won't know where I'm living or who I'm living with. My parents are stupid. Paco goes scored again, turning back to his belongings. He decided, standing behind the explosive blow, why Ibru probably wasn't the safest position. So you hope to wander around the grove. Hey, back ago, I'm back. You spun around, breath itching in your throat as your gaze caught crimson. You didn't even have the chance to utter a word before strong arms are wrapped around your waist and you went spinning around. You let out a laugh, clinging to Kirishima as he nearly toppled over. He finally set you down, a blinding smile on his face as he glared down at you. I can't believe it! What are you doing here? You smiled. <laughs> I'm coming with you. I've already got the A-OK -okay from Mr. Grunchy Pants over there. It was your turn to be cut off. As Kirishima pulled you into a hug, you immediately melted into it, finding comfort in a scent of smoke and wood. That's amazing! But wait, what about your parents? And the shop? He pulled away, a frown adorning his face. It's fine. My mother told me to live with you guys, and I always wanted an adventure. I mean, even since I was a kid. So she's putting my safety in your hands. Hiroshima seemed to puff up in pride with your words, nodding furiously. And of course, as a man, I will protect you with all my life. The two of you grinned at each other, neither willing to pull away from the other grasp. But how did you come this back ago? Isn't exactly one for tag along? You sheepishly scratched the back of your neck. Um, I'm not quite sure myself. Is it something about you having decided already and no point arguing with that, I think? Your eyebrow furrowed as you watched his face pale. The both of you jumped when Bakugo yelled from across the grove. You mean you didn't fucking tell her? Ugh, just keep that sappy bullshit away from me. You pursued your lips, an inquisitive gaze settled on you. Hmm? Mind telling me what is it about? Kirishima stammered for a few seconds before heaving a sigh. It's probably. Uh, okay, it probably wasn't manly to hide it from you, but. Um, he trailed off, scratching the back of his neck. You know that ring I gave you? You nodded, raising your hand to show you were still wearing it. Well, as I told you, every dragon born is gifted with a ring when they're born, and. They signify our origins. You nodded again, squeezing your hand with your squeezing his hand with yours to her gym onward. Well, there's another tradition attached to the ring. Kirishima adverted his eyes, covering his mouth with the back of his hands. The ring are meant to be gifted to one the dragon born intended to mate with to place claim over them and protect them? It took a moment, but you eventually comprehended what Kirishima had said. You instinctively let go of his hand. As you crouched down, buried your face in your hands. But I didn't mean it to give it that way. I just, I mean, I mean, I had badly made with you, you know, but that's not what I wanted to say. Oh, God. I... Kirishima huffed, quickly turning away in a vain attempt to hide his flushed cheeks. The two of you were in silence. I, um, I'm flattered you think I'd be good enough for a, a mate. I just wasn't expecting that. You mumbled, slightly revealing your face. You carefully stood up, knees almost shaking. You gingerly touched his shoulder, smiling softly as he turned towards you. I'm happy that you give this ring to me. No matter what exactly tension you had behind it. You quickly leaned forward, planting a kiss on the boy's cheeks. If his face wasn't already flushed, it was now as red as his hair. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm opposed to being your mate. Thought you could at least try it and court me first. <laughs> the 
the two of you heard Bakugo sputter before he began yelling loudly in protest. Your gaze returned to one another before you both promptly burst into a fit of giggles. Kirishima found himself absent-minded. Kirishima found himself absent-mindedly lacing his finger with yours. Aching to stand closer to you. Bakugo is going to regret this, isn't it? You asked. Kirishima hummed in response. Mm, yeah. But I can deal with him if I get to do this. He pecked your forehead, a thumb green plastered on his face. Fucking disgusting! The two of you burst out laughing again. I'm not gonna be no